All right, we're going to dynamically load images. This is the previous image that I had from before. It's image two. Um, and I've given it a name. Didn't have a name before, but I gave it a name, image two. I didn't change anything else. I also added this button down here called image one, and it's got its button three. It'll be in the in the code. Um, the signal, of course, is going to be uh, on button three clicked, and we go to the usual callback by that name when it's clicked. Okay, those are the only two things I um, changed in the Glade file. In the code itself, we got a bunch of changes. First of all, um, I added button three, um, and I also added button three down here in the uh, builder end because we have to get the callbacks from it, and uh, so it's also there. The other thing is I've added image one and image two. Uh, image one is what we're going to actually load the image with. Image two is the existing image, which is on the screen. Now, just before I go into, where is it right here? GTK main. Once you're in here, you don't come, you never return. Is I set image one equal to null, and that'll be clear in a moment. Uh, so on button three, clicked down here. All right. So if you click that button, you come here. First of all, I set up a character string with the text prr.jpg. That's the name of a file in the current directory. Then I create two integers, one named hor for horizontal, the other named ver for vertical. And those will be the place on the screen I want to, um, I want to position the image. I check to see if image one is uh, null. If it's null, I don't do anything. That's false. If it's not null, it means the image has already been pl placed into the screen or into the container on the screen, fixed one, and I want to remove it. That removes image one from fixed one. Fixed one is our main container up here. It's the container right under window. That's where everything is being placed. So if the image exists on the screen, I want to remove it from the screen. All right. Um, I want to hide image two, the spark gap radio thing. That hides it. There's another function called show, which is the way you see right underneath here, GTK widget show. All right, I, I fetch the pointer. I get the pointer to the data structure that represents the image by evoking the function GTK image new from file. There's a couple of these, but new from file is probably the easiest. Um, and it goes out to that file name and reads the file in and sets it up in a data structure. And image one points to that data structure. This is out of order. It doesn't really matter, but uh, technically it should be down there. Uh, the next thing I do is I add image one to the container. The container, of course, is my basically my GUI. And that's the master container at the top, as we pointed out over here. On the upper left, it's right under window. OK, so um, I add the image to it, and I tell it to show the image. Had it been the other way around, still would have worked. But um, the image now has the attribute show to it. Um, and then I move the image uh, because it, it, if I just show the image, it'll, I think, occur in the upper left-hand corner. I'm not positive. But I want to move it to a specific location. So I say GTK fixed move, which means I'm going to move something within a fixed container. And um, fixed one is of type GTK fixed. It's a fixed container. So I want to move within what fixed container? Well, I tell it which fixed container. Fixed. I had to project it because fixed was declared, fixed one was declared as a GTK widget, not as a GTK fixed. Uh, but it is a GTK fixed. All right, so I, I project it properly so it's getting a um, what it thinks it wants. Um, the thing to move, of course, is image one, and the locations to move it are horizontal and vertical, and it will position it in the center of the screen. And that's how it works. So you can load any image. Now, I've done this from static file names, of course. You could read a file name in. You could type a file name in. You could use the File Explorer to find a file name. Anyway, you can get a file name that's, that's legible, uh, and uh, hopefully the, fi the, the file or the image will not be too big. We have not gotten into the business of rescaling images. GTK will not rescale your images. If you want to rescale the images, you'll have to use other software. Um, you'll have to invoke it and run it um, separately. You can run it from one of these uh, callback routines, but it is a separate set of code. All right, so let's see if it works. Um, and compile and run it. All right, there's my spark gap radio and so forth. So if I click this, there you go. 
you know, Spark App Radio disappeared, and up comes this uh, old poster for the Pennsylvania Railroad. If I click it again, nothing's going to happen because it's not a toggle. That would probably be a better use for the toggle button to turn from one image to the other image. And I could simply go down there, and you can sense on the toggle whether it's been toggled or not. Um, active, non-active. You see, we already got that information. And I could have turned on the um, the show for the other and turned on the hide for image one. But um, anyway, yes, you can dynamically load images and position them on your GUI.